It was a quiet Saturday night in Denver. One of those nights a man feels he ought to be interested in the finer things. And what finer place to find the finer things than the Denver Opera House? That's all right, girls. Embarrass me. Go right ahead and embarrass me. Quinn, I believe you've met Professor Max Millian and his nieces, Miss Frida and Miss Gisella. We met only in passing last night. Well, if that was only in passing, I'd like to stay a while. She means informally. Well, whatever she means, I'm in favor of it. Mr. Slate, I was too upset to express myself last night. But I would like to say that when you saved my Stradivarius, you saved an old man's life. I could not live without my beautiful violin. Oh, I was glad to do it, sir. Which brings us to the matter in point. I understand you have a small detective agency here in Denver. Well, it's not that small. Well, just how large is your organization? Oh, about my size. <laughs> in any case, my insurance company is grateful. As you might know, we insure the Denver Opera House against fire and theft. And you saved my company an outlay of, um... How much would you say, Professor? I was offered $40,000 in Vienna. Only last year. For that fiddle? It is more than a fiddle, my friend. It is a masterpiece of craftsmanship. Listen. You see? The tone is perfect. Unbelievable. Well, uh, I'll take your word for it, Professor. Thanks. Now, uh, Mr. Quinn, where do I fit into this? Well, we would like to hire a guard for the professor's violin for as long as he remains here in Denver. One week. Will you take the job? Please, well, Mr. I... Slate. As a favor to us. Perhaps Mr. Slate has better things to do than spend a week living with us. Now, just a moment here. I'd be, uh... living with you? Like one of the family. And we're a very close family, Mr. Slate. How about it? Well, what's it worth? Two hundred dollars. I don't have that much on me now, but if you just give me half an hour, I can scrape it up real fast. We pay you. Mr. Quinn, you just hired yourself a fiddle watcher. And incidentally, uh, considering the side benefits, you could have driven a lot harder bargain. Well, we're satisfied. 
And I might add that if we're happy with your work, there'll be lots more of it for you. Come, Mr. Slade, we do not wish to be late for the Sunday matinee. Yes, sir. <laughs> Not hard about it. Mm. Sounded almost pretty, didn't it, Matt? Yeah, beautiful. Will you please open our dressing room? Oh, uh, it's already open, Matt. Mm. Will you step in while we change? Well, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I don't oh, think we I... do not mind. In the theater, we are, how you say, one big happy family. Oh, I see. Well, I, I guess I'll just be happy out here, thanks. As you wish. Oh, perhaps after the matinee performance, you and I could... Well, if it isn't the big hero himself. Mr. Slate, I would like you to meet Trig Bronson, our sharpshooter. And this is Atlas de Grey. Well, pleased to meet you, gentlemen. The pleasure is all yours. Very well, that's the way you want it. Well... Gentlemen, I leave you to get acquainted. There's one thing you ought to know. Oh, and what's that? She's been spoke for. I've already staked my claim. Well, it's just too bad, Mr. Bronson. What do you mean? Because I come from a long line of claim jumpers. Now, you listen to me. You listen, listen to me, right. mister. One more poke and you're going to be the only nine-fingered sharpshooter in vaudeville. Places, please. Overture. Places, please. There's a fellow I'd like to shoot my initials in. Maybe I should rough him up a little bit, Hudrick. I'll let you know. I sure like the way you angels dress. You not hurt? Oh, I feel just fine. What happened? A sandbag fell and hit your poor head. Oh? The rope was cut. What rope? Hey, that fiddle. My violin. My precious strength. My precious Stradivarius. My life. Why did I ever to the wild west come? Well, there it is, Pop. Looks all right. Better check it, though. Ah, uh, not one scratch. Perhaps... We are making a mountain from a molehill out. Well, maybe. Huh? The animation is just about over, Professor, so you're on next. You hoist the curtain for one minute, please, while I tune. Come, girls. I must talk to you. Well, help yourself. Come to my room after the matinee. Room 7, Denver Palace. Seven, Denver Palace, eh? Who is it? Slade. Just a moment. Well, hello. Come in. Thank you. I hope you do not mind my informal attire. But in the theater we are, as you say. Yes, I know. One big happy family. Can I take your things? Well, sure, sure. Won't you sit down? Well, thank you. You know, uh, I think I'll uh, be more comfortable over here. I suppose you wonder why I asked you here. Yes, some. To tell you the truth, I wanted to ask you a question. Well, go right ahead. Well, the question is this. What does one do for entertainment on a Sunday afternoon in Denver? 
I'm afraid not much. What with the blue laws, you know. But is there not some nice place where one can go and drink perhaps a glass of May wine? Uh, not on Sunday. Then perhaps uh, a casino where a lady could uh, risk a chip or two in roulette? Not on Sunday. That is against the law, too? Uh-huh. Everything against the law on Sunday in Denver? Just about. Even this? I'm going to pitch horseshoes. I did not invite you here to pitch horseshoes. No. Drop a tree. Be careful. He's a sharpshooter. Yeah, you don't do so bad at it yourself. It looked like our trick shot artist wasn't so tricky at that. He'd run himself into a dead end. He'd have to have gone through one of three doors. Not that one. Padlock, tight for Sunday. Not that one either. Not even a mouse could have gotten between those packing boxes. That left number three. Denver Casket Company. I didn't know exactly what he had in mind, but whatever it was, he picked a nice place for it. I'd have felt a lot better if the law was along, but there wasn't time. Shotgun? If I have to. Yeah, and you're liable to make a pile of splinters out of this pretty violin. That's right, and fill you full of holes, too. Yeah, but you won't do that, will you, Slade? Don't try me, Trick. Look, I walk out of here with this, and maybe someday you'll accidentally get it back. You pull that trigger, and it's goodbye fiddle. Pretty smart, aren't you? Yeah, I think so. All right, Shrink. That makes us even for the sandbag. I didn't do that. Oh, who did? How should I know? I'm not the only one who could use $40,000. All right, come on, let's go. Wait a minute. 40000 is a lot of dough. Why don't we split it? Head for Mexico. Sorry, Trig, no deal. What's the matter? You couldn't live with yourself? Oh, isn't that, Trig? What then? Just couldn't live with you. Come on. I'll need some help. All right. Well, it 
but it uh, doesn't seem to be damaged. It looks all right to me. It better be, or you can change your name to Mud as far as working in Denver is concerned. Where is he? Where is he? The bummer who tried to steal my precious Stradivarius. The sheriff took him down to see the doctor, Professor. Good. I hope it is something serious. Professor, I wish you'd look at your violin. Oh, yeah, yeah. My beautiful violin. Is it all right, Professor? Yeah, you are. It seems to be fine. Well, maybe you'd better try it out, you know, just for tone. No, no, that is not necessary. The tone is fine. I can see by looking. Well, good. That's a big relief. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for getting it back. Mr. Slade, for the second time, I'm very grateful to you. But tell me, how did that bummer happen to get a hold of it? Maybe you better ask your niece, Frida, that. Oh, I did, uh, but she, she is feeling very bad about this. Mm -hmm. What did she say? I didn't understand something like uh, playing horseshoes with you. Horseshoes? Uh, maybe she is... Uh, a little bit uh, confused, huh? The trick Bronson talked, she might have something to be hysterical about. What do you mean? From where I'm sitting, it looks like she's in on it. Well, that's a pretty serious accusation, Slade. Somebody told Trig Bronson that I'd be there, and she's the only one that knew. I knew you were coming to visit. Gisela knew. We have no secret in our family. Gisela, huh? That's uh, your other niece, isn't it? Yeah. She and uh, Trig Bronson are kind of friendly, aren't they? Oh, they are good friends. Hmm. She at the hotel now? Uh, she said she was going to the theater to rehearse a few dance steps. You think she's mixed up with Trig in this? That's what I mean to find out, Mr. Quint. No, she said she might come by and practice a few dance steps if I didn't mind. Uh, what did you say? What do you think? Have you seen her in that statue outfit she's wearing? Uh, what about it? If I could just whittle myself down a couple of statues like that, I'd spend a week in the museum and die happy. <laughs> oh, Mr. Slade. What a nice surprise. Uh, Zella, I was hoping to see you here. Well, you have found me, no? What did you wish? Oh, I just uh, wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Hmm, very well. Come to my dressing room and you can ask me while I change. May I have the key, please? Sure. If you need me, I'll be right here. Fine, Duncan. I do not think we will need you. Well, I brought them up. Come, Mr. Kate. Thanks, Gisela. See, I'm after you. Oh, how nice. Sit down, Mr. Slate. Thank you. Well, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? <laughs> Mr. Slate. You said you had some questions to ask me. Oh, oh yes, uh, some questions. Uh, uh, yeah. Well? Well, um, uh, what's this about you and uh, Trick Bronson? What about us? Well, he uh, says he has his brand on you. No man has a brand on me, Mr. Slate. No, of course not, but uh, you're... Uh, you're still friendly with him, aren't you? I'd rather be friendly with you. Yeah. Well, 
Well, we were talking about Trick Bronson. All this talk about Trick Bronson bores me. Will you please give me my costume? Yes, ma'am. Where is it? Over here in this closet. Certainly. <clears throat> Which costume do you want? The pink leotards over here, please. Oh, you mean these? There you are. certainly botched this one, Slade. My beautiful Stradivarius. I hope you're proud of yourself. It was so beautiful, so true of tone. I never even had to tune it. But once in all those years, a violin like that is irreplaceable. A check for $40,000 will be drawn in your name tomorrow, Professor. I'm only sorry I can't prosecute you for criminal negligence. You're a fool and a blunderer, Slade. A fool and a blunderer! Well, maybe I am, Mr. Quinn. But I'm not the one that's going to pay $40,000 for a $2 fiddle. What? What is he saying? What was that you were saying, Professor, about your never having to tune your beautiful Stradivarius? You tuned something during the matinee. I saw you. You see, Quinn, he switched the Stradivarius for that cheap fiddle when I was knocked out by that sandbag. You're mad! Am I? And then he had the two girls talk their boyfriends, Trigg and Atlas, into trying to steal a worthless violin. See, he was going to keep the money and keep the Stradivarius, too. You lie! Do I? Shoot me! If you want! Oh. I still say you lie! Don't worry, Professor. I'm not going to shoot you. But I might put a little hole in that uh, violin there up on the wall. No! Huh? No! No! Not my Stradivarius. Well, there you are, Quinn. Much obliged to you, Slade. Much obliged. And look, anything I said in the heat of anger, well, I, I hope you'll forget about it. Oh, sure, sure, Mr. Quinn. Just as long as your company doesn't insist on prosecuting the professor and the girls. Well, we feel the less said about that sort of thing, the better. I don't understand, though. What? Why you're so interested. After all, they did try to set you up for a robbery. Yeah, I know, but... Well, you see, Mr. Quinn, the way I look at it, girls will be girls. <laughs> you know, I'm sure glad of it, too. <laughs> Real glad. I can't blame anybody but myself. I was well paid for my assignment and met two charming girls. But had I known then what I know now, I never would have agreed to play nursemaid to a violin.